Heavenly friends, we are gathered here today in the sight of, of God in the presence of this company to witness the union of Dylan and Paige in marriage. And marriage is not something to be entered into lightly, but reverently and thoughtfully to honor the holy estate that God created it to be. In fact, from the very beginning of the Bible, God tells us that, that both male and female were created in his image. That means that you guys and all of us here today have the ability to be able to love God supremely and love each other unconditionally. In fact, when we get into the second chapter of the Bible, we see that, that God uh, said that, hey, it's not good for a man to be alone. And so God said, hey, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna create the birds of the air, the, the beast of the field, and I'm gonna bring them to you, Adam, and I want you to name every single one of them. But the Bible is very clear that none of them were suitable to be a companion for Adam. And so God said, hmm, I'm going to just uh, create uh, something even more special. And so God put the man to sleep, and God took a rib from the side uh, of Adam, and he molded and shaped and put his stamp of approval on the first woman. And he brought that woman to Adam, and Adam looked at that woman. I'm not sure what Adam said, but I bet it was incredible, whatever he said. It was like and Adam looked at her, and he said, I'm going to read this from the scripture here today. He said that, uh, here in chapter 2, he says, The Lord caused a deep sleep to come over the man, and he slept, and he took that rib, and then he put that flesh back together. And, and, and the man said, when he got brought the woman to Adam, he said, This one at last he is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one will be called woman, for she was taken from man. And this is why a man will leave his father and his mother and bond with his wife, and they will become one flesh. And so today, in this holy estate, Dylan and Paige, we've chosen to enter today, not being aware of any reason this man or this woman should be united together in marriage, I ask this question today. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Well, let's pray together. Father, we are just thankful today, Lord, to be here and be in worship with you today in the center Lord. Lord, we thank you today that you created marriage from the very first man and the very first woman. Lord, it was your design, God, they come together. And so, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity um, to be a part of this holy ceremony. And, uh, God, we ask for a blessing uh, on dealing and pace today, and we ask for your guidance, we ask for your wisdom, that you would help them, God, to honor you in everything they do do from this day forward, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Dylan and Paige, <clears throat> we're about to pledge the most sacred vows today that one person can make to another. And as you stand before these witnesses today and before God, uh, it is important that you give careful consideration to which you are committing yourself today. For both, both of you, as well as all of us who are married here today, are accountable to God for that which we pledge. So before you exchange vows today, I just want to take just a few minutes to briefly talk about what it means to honor, to love, and to cherish. And so today you're making a commitment to each other. You're going to make a commitment today uh, to honor each other. And when we look at the Bible, we see the word honor, and it means that you're making a commitment today to respect each other above all to highly esteem one another before all, to hold each other in high regard. That means today that you're making a commitment to protect each other, to put each other first in your life. And you're also going to make a commitment today to love and cherish one another. And in fact, the Bible in 1 John, it talks about uh, love. And we see, and it says pretty plain, plainly for us today that this is how we love, we know uh, how, that we, how we come to know what love really is. That Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And that we should lay down our lives for our brothers and for our sisters. And you guys know today, even before you come husband and wife, that you are a brother and a sister in Christ. And the Bible says clearly that, hey, you want to understand what it means to love and cherish? And you got to learn what it means to lay your life down for one another. In fact, one chapter over in 1 John, we hear uh, the writer of John tell us another very important thing that we want to know today about love. And it says this, is that as we know, we have come to know and to believe that love, uh, that love that God has for us, 
and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. And I want to tell you something. The writer of John has given us a very important uh, thing that we all need to understand here today who we're married, and that is this. That the closer, if you remain in God, God's love remains in you. And the closer you get to God in your relationship, the more that you're going to be able to love one another. And that's the way it works. And I mean, when we think about, you know, loving and honoring and cherishing each other, you know one of the things that really begins to mess up some families sometimes is that we begin to love and we begin to honor and we begin to cherish other things in our life than we do each other. Relationships really do matter, y'all. And that's the thing today that we want to understand. So it's a just, just a, so uh, we understand that today that the, this is the only way today that you guys will be able to ever fulfill the command that, that Paul wrote to the Ephesians for husbands and for wives when he says to you, Paige, that, hey, that you're to, just like the church submits to Christ, that you're to, sub, to submit to him in your relationship. And that, Dylan, that just as uh, that you're to love Paige, just as Christ loved his church, and the Bible says gave himself for her. And so today, I just want to encourage you, you know, as we talk about love and honor and cherish today, please understand that draw close to God in your relationship. Because it's the only way that you can fulfill the command of God in your marriage. Honor God in your marriage. And so just in summary today, Dylan and Paige, you know, to love and honor and cherish each other for the rest of your life, that you must lay down your lives. Your selfish desires, your passions, your ambitions, and your pride, for, for you lay it down for each other. You know, you must cherish the other person in your relationship more than you cherish your own self. Your love for each other now comes before yourself, before your parents, before your friends, before your jobs, before your leisure activities, before sports center, guitar, shopping, but you get the point, all right? None of, but all that stuff, none of that stuff is wrong. It's just when we begin to love those things and cherish those things in our life more than we cherish others, and we're, we're asking for that. Right? So I just want to encourage you guys to, to today, before we take these, before you say your vows to one another, to understand that, that pursue God diligently in your relationship. Because you will love each other with a rich love that you can't even imagine if you'll do that. You will serve each other and cherish each other. Uh, today, Paige and Dylan have uh, written their own vows to each other, and uh, this is a very special part of the ceremony today, and so uh, they're going to share it with each other. They're speaking directly to each other, but we're the audience today, and so I'm going to let Dylan go first, and uh, Dylan's got some special things to say to Paige today, so let's start. children if we're blessed to have them, and all of our endeavors. I will always strive to be your example, your support, and your shoulder to lean on in hopes of a reflection of Jesus Christ who we should all model our lives as. Second, I vow to always make it my priority to do what is right by you. And I will tell you up front, this vow is guaranteed to come with hard time, struggles, and the possibility <laughs> However, this is a must. I am not going to do what is easy and convenient 
this marriage is like all, it's something that we're going to have to work at. It's not a lottery. It's not so much about having the right one as it is having one to do right by. With those two vows in mind, I pray that you will have me always and love me with the same intensity and enthusiasm as that evening that we first met. I love you. Now uh, seal your vows, Paige, <coughs> by the giving and receiving of rings. The unbroken circle of these rings symbolize a union between a husband and wife with God that cannot be broken. And the precious gold of these rings symbolize all that is pure and holy about the marital bond. May God use your marriage to purify you both and to bring glory to himself as you wear these rings, may they ever remind you of the love and the commitment that you guys have made. Do you know what uh, Begin with you. <laughs> You'll place that ring on Paige's finger and repeat after me. 
I, Dylan, take your page to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward. I pledge before God and these witnesses to place your good above mine, now and always, no matter the circumstances. I promise to honor you, to love you, and to cherish you as long as we both shall live. Joyfully and willfully, I commit myself to you and to you alone. your good above mine, now and always, no matter the circumstances. I promise to honor you, to love you, and to cherish you as long as we both shall live. Joyfully and willfully, I commit myself to you and to you. At this part, at point in the worship, the ceremony, we're going to do a, a unity braid, also known as God's Knot. And so, as Paige and Dylan make their way to uh, the braid, I'm going to explain <coughs> to you guys what it's about. If you haven't seen it, um, before they begin the braiding, about just a moment, let me just explain to you that the braiding of the three strands, or also known as God's Knot, demonstrates how Dylan and Paige are joined by God in marriage. Each strand holds special meaning. The first strand symbolizes that the Lord Jesus Christ has been invited by Dylan and Paige to the position of authority in this marriage relationship. The second strand represents the groom. It represents uh, Dylan who's been made a new creation in Christ Jesus. As Dylan loves his wife, and submits himself to the Lord, the Lord in return will demonstrate his great love in this marriage relationship. The third strand represents the bride, Paige, who's been cleansed and washed by the salvation of Christ and has submitted herself to the Lord. And as she does that and submits herself to the husband and to the Lord, the Lord in turn will nurture and strengthen this marriage relationship. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says this, Though one may be overpowered, two can defeat themselves, defend themselves, excuse me. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Today, Dylan and Paige have been woven together by God as one in marriage. <laughs> 